Forza Motorsport is out for those who have the more expensive game versions and got 5 day early access. If you're watching this guide in the future, don't worry, things still apply. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize Forza Motorsport for the best, most stable performance while keeping it looking as good as possible. Just a quick note though, I'm not going to cover Windows optimization pretty much at all. Instead, this guide will focus completely on the game itself. If you'd like to optimize Windows for better performance, in the description down below you'll find a Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. So without further ado, I'll head across to Steam and fire up Forza Motorsport. Now, as far as I hear, this game doesn't have an FPS lock on PC unless you're playing multiplayer, where for some reason there apparently is a 60 FPS lock. I'm not too sure about this, but this game still left a lot on the table when it comes to performance at the time of release or even pre-release slash early access in this pre-order period. There is going to be tons of work towards optimization and improving the game further, so if performance is lacking, it should hopefully improve. The first time you fire up the game, it'll optimize shaders, it's important to let this process finish, as it'll result in a huge performance boost versus unoptimized shaders. Most DirectX 12 games require this step, and it results in tons of extra performance. When you reach the main menu, simply head down to the settings menu, and in here, on the basic video tab, you have a benchmark that you can run before, after, and during optimization, just to see what kind of effect each option has or of course your settings. For me I'll leave full screen on resolution to my native and to get a baseline I'll max out pretty much everything. I do have an RTX 3080 so I'm able to use ray tracing but of course using ray tracing of any kind will absolutely tank your FPS. Okay so cranking everything up to high I'll apply and head up to the run benchmark section where we can see what kind of performance we get but I will be using external software as well to further track. Okay so off the bat we've already dropped from 90 slash 100 ish FPS in the intro races to about 37 40 ish, which is cinematic to say the least. Ray tracing is absolutely tanking performance, and I'm pretty sure that's one of the main reasons that we're tanking FPS here. If you're running a really up to date 40 series NVIDIA card or AMD's equivalent, you may notice less of a performance hit, but personally, him sitting at this FPS number is a bit too low. We'll exit the benchmark and back in the main menu, settings, advanced video, we'll be disabled disabling the ray tracing entirely. This should give you a huge performance boost just with this one option. With ray tracing disabled, let's apply changes and run the benchmark once more just to see what kind of a difference it makes. I'm expecting a huge performance boost. And would you look at that, pretty much a jump straight up to 60 FPS, which goes from cinematic 30 to a very playable 60. Obviously, this game is somewhat optimized for especially modern hardware, where if you have a powerful enough graphics card, you can comfortably crank up pretty much everything except for ray tracing, and you'll have a really good looking experience with, as it seems, minimal frame stuttering, lag, etc. This is a really playable FPS count, sitting comfortably around 60. Perfect. But let's say you're on lower end hardware, or you'd like to get more performance out of your system. Well, that's exactly what this section of the guide is for. Now that we've got an opening benchmark, we'll head back to settings. We'll start on the basic video tab. All right, so at the very top, quality defaults. If we use dynamic render quality, this will automatically change settings as we go to try and keep a better frame rate. For me, I'll leave this on ultra so that it has the least effect possible. And dynamic optimization, if we choose default, it'll change our level of quality, etc automatically. But if we change anything on the advanced video tab over here, you'll see that changing anything disables dynamic render quality, or at least when we apply it by changing it to custom. This means that it'll follow our rules, so I'd recommend setting this to custom, but of course this will be set for you later on. As for display, you should absolutely have it set to full screen for the most stable, best performance. Resolution should match your display. If you're playing on a 2K display, set this to 2K, no higher, no lower, etc. Essentially, we're not going to be rendering pixels we don't see, and if you push this too low, your game will get needlessly blurry. What we can do instead is, skipping over show frame rate, as this is your preference, we can use NVIDIA DLSS if you're on an NVIDIA graphics card. Unfortunately, there isn't an AMD or Intel equivalent, which is really disappointing, but maybe if you're using that hardware, these options will show. I personally have an NVIDIA graphics card, 
it, so I can't tell you otherwise. We have options of auto, DLAA, which is just for anti-aliasing, then quality, balanced, performance, and ultra performance. The more to the performance side you push this, the more performance you're gonna get in game, but noticeably, if you push this too far, you'll start getting weird graphic artifacts, glitches, etc. So I'd recommend leaving this at quality and lowest for a really stable, performant game. You can leave this on just ultra quality for a very slight AI upscale effect, where it helps smooth out some aliased edges, which is essentially those bumpy, pixely edges on walls, lines, etc. So either set this to ultra quality if you're hitting a good FPS count so far, otherwise push it up to quality. For me, I'll leave it on quality and head across to advanced video. In here, under performance, dynamic render quality. This option automatically changes the level of detail for objects and things like that, and the more to the low end you have this, the more you'll notice objects pop in with higher and lower quality as you get closer to them. I'd recommend leaving this on the higher end, that way more high quality objects are kept loaded, so you don't notice weird pop in as you're driving past things, play etc. Then performance target. This tells the game what performance we're aiming for and it'll automatically push to try and get us as close as possible to this target. We have 30 FPS, 60 FPS and unlocked. I'd highly recommend setting this to unlocked and only choose any one of the vSync options if you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your display don't, don't match. Unlocked is going to give you the best performance but if you're doing something like streaming or recording and for some reason your OBS or streaming software is lagging or stuttering, I'd recommend locking this to 60 or even 30 if you're really struggling. As the game is losing it a little bit in this options menu as I'm recording, I'll drop it to 30 FPS, but of course I'll raise this before we get to testing later on. Then resolution scale, you can leave it on auto to automatically adjust it while you're playing the game, otherwise if you'd like to keep a really crispy looking game, set this up to 100 and leave it there. This is going to result in a much more stable gameplay experience and visually coherent. If you set this to maybe 90% or 80 etc, it's going to lower the resolution of your game and use AI to upscale it. If you're already using something like NVIDIA DLSS, just leave this on auto, otherwise you can manually choose a resolution here to change it around while you're in game. Leaving it at 100% is full native resolution, anything above this is going to raise your quality quite a bit, but of course it's going to be pretty much twice as taxing on your GPU. The lower you set this option, the less VRAM you're going to use, but essentially most of the time you'll be leaving this on either 100% or auto. For me, auto is fine. Anisotropic filtering basically filters the textures to make them look a little bit better, but of course should have pretty much no impact on most modern graphics cards. You can set this to maybe 2x or leave it on off for the most performance boost, even though the performance boost you're going to get from changing this option at all is going to be very minimal, if none at all. Usually leaving this on 16x has practically no impact on modern graphics cards. That's just because this technology has come so far. If you're really clawing for FPS, leave this on off, even if it's just a placebo. Then scrolling down to lighting. Ray tracing quality we've already touched on. With any of these options turned on, you are going to tank FPS. Ray tracing is hugely taxing and of course requires modern graphics cards in order to run properly if at all, such as any of the RTX graphics cards from Nvidia's lineup or the equivalent from AMD, Intel, etc. I'd recommend leaving this to off and for RZAO quality, changing this option has no impact if ray tracing quality is already turned off, so we can skip over this. The higher you push RTAO, which is ray traced ambient occlusion, which is essentially lighting for objects close to other objects, the more FPS you can expect to lose, the higher the option is. Anyways, for us, it doesn't matter as ray tracing is turned off. Then shadow quality, as this is a racing game, you can comfortably leave this on low or even medium. Pushing it to anything above medium is probably very, very unnecessary, as we're not going to be focusing on shadows pretty much at all. Most of the time, most shadows will be far away from us anyways. Then cube map reflection and quality, this will have to do with glass mirrors, shiny metal, etc. And has an impact on both your CPU and GPU. Usually you'll be able to leave this on medium for okay looking reflections, dropping it to low may hinder how good the game looks as you're using much lower quality reflections, but for the most part, medium is as high as I would go with this unless you have tons of extra FPS to spare. Then scrolling down to car detail, model quality, usually this depends on how much VRAM you have. For some reason, it's not really mentioned here, but you can usually leave this on high for really good looking car quality, especially if you're playing in third person. I'd recommend keeping this on the higher end if you can afford. For me, I'll leave this on high. Then car livery quality. This has to do with 
colors, patterns, stickers, etc. And the higher you have this option, the better those decals and paint will look. Usually I'd recommend leaving this on high, if not medium, as it's not as important as having really good car models, but it is still pretty important if you want to read what stickers say, etc, etc. Medium's probably a good option to start from, but you can crank this up later. Windshield reflection quality has to do with the vehicle's windshield in the cockpit cam, and if you're playing the game in third person where you're flying behind the vehicle, it'll probably have pretty much no impact on your FPS. If you find that playing in third person has has a huge FPS difference over playing in first person, this is the option you need to come back and change, as well as probably mirror quality too. But for now, you can leave this on medium and possibly lower it later on, as reflections in your windshield you're not necessarily going to be focusing on as you're looking through it. Then mirror quality. This has to do with rear view mirrors, side mirrors, etc. And leaving this on blow is pretty okay, unless you notice that things are blocky and pixely in the reflections. In this case, you can crank it up to medium, but you usually don't need to push this too high at all. Then scrolling down scene detail, track texture quality, as you're going to be racing along the track at pretty high speeds, this is probably something you don't really need to worry about, but you can crank it up for a much better looking game. This option, as set to auto, is set to low pretty much by default, as you can tell by the VRAM usage estimate. If we crank it up, you'll see it uses 400 megs, more VRAM for medium, and another 800 on top of that for high. There is usually a lot of track, so keeping it all loaded in memory is going to use quite a bit of VRAM. If you have a more powerful graphics card with more VRAM to spare, you should be able to crank this up comfortably without costing yourself pretty much any FPS at all. The thing about options that mess around with VRAM, especially textures and things like that, the higher you have the option, the more visual impact it'll have on the game, but it'll have a really negligible, if not small effect on FPS, as long as you're not reaching the limits of your graphics card and maxing out your VRAM. For me, I have 12 gigs available, so I can comfortably crank everything up. If you're on an 8 gig graphics card, you can usually crank everything up as well. For the most part, with high or ultra on 8 gig graphics cards or above, if you have a 6 gig graphics card, you can usually handle high, if not ultra, and moving down from there, medium or low for a 4 gig graphic card, etc, etc. For me, I'll leave this on high as I have the VRAM available. Particle effects quality. This should have a minimal FPS impact most of the time when you're playing the game, unless you impact another car, a wall, cross, etc. In that case, if you find yourself losing tons of FPS, this is the option you need to come back and lower. For me, I'll leave this on medium, if not low, and move on. Then finally at the bottom, motion blur quality and post-processing. Usually I'd recommend turning off motion blur, but this is a racing game and having this enabled is not only going to help you smooth out weird frame stutters and things like that, but it'll also make the game feel a lot faster than it actually is. Motion blur is a wonderful effect to have in a racing game. For this, I'd recommend keeping it on high, if not low. Definitely don't turn it off. Finally, lens flare quality. Lens flares are the bright blurry effects around bright object sources. We have two options for this, auto, off, and high. For the most part, you'll leave this on high for a much better looking game, as it'll have a very small impact on FPS. Finally, we can apply, and we've finished optimizing these settings for the best looking experience while keeping it very smooth. I'll come back and unlock my FPS as we locked this previously, just to hopefully smooth it out in the menu. For some reason, it's making my OBS lag. But anyways, now let's run the benchmark and see what kind of FPS we're getting post-optimization. And there we go. We're setting at a solid 60, 70-ish FPS. I'm not too sure what's causing my FPS to drop a little bit. I don't think it's the game. I'm pretty sure restarting it will smooth out these weird hitches that I'm getting or drops, but you can see beside those few drops, the gameplay experience is rather smooth. I think I'll quickly need to restart it just to make sure nothing's interfering with the game. And also, you'll probably need to restart it anyway, as some options require you to restart the game, even though it's not forced upon you when you change them, like it is in some other games. Right, so I'm heading back to settings, we'll run the benchmark once more, still with our optimized options, and see what kind of performance we get. And there we go, already it's noticeably a lot more smooth. Yep, I'm not too sure what caused that, but a restart definitely fixed it up. We went from a stable, maybe 60-ish FPS up to the mid to low 70s, so it's somewhat of an improvement, but I would assume it's a lot more smooth in actual gameplay, with way fewer frame drops. Of course, this is optimized for the best looking experience while saving us a few FPS, and on lower end systems, the difference is likely going to be a lot larger. For the most part, if you're really clawing for FPS, we just need to lower pretty much all of the options, but of course, you already know that if you're on a super low end 
systems if you're on a super low end system. For the most part, let's talk about what can really gain you FPS if you're on a low end system. For the most part, in the performance section, we'll leave everything as is, but you can lower the dynamic render quality as it'll change all of the other auto options that we have set below. Ray tracing, obviously the largest impact, then maybe shadow quality, and beyond this, car detail. These options, while they may only really take a bit of VRAM, do have a huge impact on how the game looks. If you're comfortable with lower quality cars, these are the options you should come back and lower. For example, I'll drop these down to low just to see what kind of performance impact it makes. None of them seem to ask me to restart, so I'll run the benchmark again in just a moment. We'll drop the track texture quality to medium, particle effects to low, motion blur quality low, and lens flare, we'll just leave it on as is. For the most part, the only thing that's really raised is shadow and reflection quality, and in fact, let's leave model quality on medium for cars. With this, we have our lower end optimized settings, where the game should still look okay, but we should get a huge increase in performance. Let's check that that actually happens. Running it once more, 75-ish FPS into the low 80s, so there's yet another 10 FPS improvement, and the game still looks pretty good. That's because we've left the car option options on the higher end, as you're going to be focusing on those mainly because you are a car and of course you're driving around cars. They're going to be the most noticeable thing during your gameplay experience, and those would therefore be the last thing that I'd recommend lowering. Finally, let's just drop everything down to the lowest possible option, just so we can get an idea of how the game runs with everything on low at 2K on a 3080 Ti. Okay, so there we go. Everything's down on low, and we'll disable lens flare quality just for an example. This is what a super low end system would be able to use. Also, let's quickly restart the game just to make sure all of the options are properly set. Back in game, we'll head into the settings once more and run the final benchmark of this video, closing it off. So now we've dropped from our optimized settings to our lower end system optimized settings. And finally, this is as low as the game will allow us to go. Do keep in mind, I am running at 2K. So dropping to 1080p, you should see a huge increase in performance. But personally, being on a 2K monitor, I'd prefer to keep it at 2K. There we go. You can see we're running at 80-ish, 90-ish FPS, probably touching 100 at places. But for the most part, it's high 80s, low 90s. The rain has almost all but completely disappeared. It's just a few particle effects left over. Over, and of course, the game still looks pretty good. This is unfortunately as low as we can push the game at 2K, so you'll still need a relatively good graphics card if you're going to be playing at 2K. At 1080p, you can expect a huge increase in performance. And of course, on top of this, video memory is sitting comfortably above 4 gigabytes. So, on graphics cards with less, you can expect really horrendous performance if you can't push texture quality and things like that low enough to fit onto your card. Anyways, that's really it for this quick optimization guide. For the most part, your performance should have greatly improved while keeping the game looking as good as possible. Personally, I'll be playing on my first optimized settings options as the game still looks absolutely A-OK, -okay, pretty much as good as Ultra, but we do gain quite a few FPS on top of it. All in all, this game hasn't been too bad to optimize, but it is still pretty taxing if you're not running higher end newish hardware. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide, so hopefully you found it useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.